Good evening everybody. Um, this is the uh, third model in my little uh, World War One era project I suppose. Um, although it seems, I suppose not uh, surprisingly, that after the Midlands Meccano Guild meeting uh, last Saturday there's a lot of other people using it for inspiration if you like for models, if inspiration is the right word of course. Anyway, so here we have, uh, or partly have, um, a, a motor bus. And you might think, well, what's this got to do with the First World War, apart from it only being around at that time? Well, if you didn't know, they were used quite extensively, these buses, and it's, um, it's a representation, so we say, of a Type B motor bus, London motor bus. Uh, petrol. Uh, the real thing that is, of course. <laughs> um, and this is... Uh, it's quite nice representation. I, I, and, and far bigger than the diagrams and uh, the description would suggest. Um, mainly because the angle the the, uh, the diagram has been drawn. Um, the diagram, <laughs> as is usual really, and probably worse than the other two models, is very... Um, it, it promotes a lot of guesswork. It's not that good a diagram. Uh, you've only got uh, well, it's not really a three-quarter rear uh, right view of it. But uh, well, there's been a, quite a bit of guesswork. This, as you can see, and probably make out, this is the chassis and the base of the sides of the bus. This end is the where the stairs will be. The bonnet at that end. Uh, I said there has been some guesswork, simple things like um, how do uh, the girders join together and uh, which length strips to use for the bonnet there. I decided it was the six hole in the end, uh, but we'll come on to that later. So, a very nice looking model, and uh, because I've had some uh, the recent parts off Ralph, I needed some base plates. I wasn't too much bothered about the colour, so I like have two of each colour sort of thing. So I had two black, two blue, two red. I thought it'd be nice to use the red on the bus. Now I do have some uh, original period uh, nickel sector plates now, but these uh, repaints by my dad with just Humbrol enamel from uh, years ago, probably, I don't know, 25, 30 years ago really. Uh, similar reds all round, so I thought, oh, I'll make use of them because they're going to have to be used sometime. This was where quite a bit of guesswork was uh, needed. Um, first of all, trying to make out how and where it joined to the main part of the chassis. Then we had issues with, uh, look at the diagram, it was hard to work out which holes the rear uprights of the bonnet fitted to. Then looking at the diagram again how much rake of angle we needed there on the bonnet and uh, the biggest change really from the uh, the uh, diagram is the front supports for the bonnet now the diagram states five hole strips but there was no way I wanted to kink a five hole strip that much there and then twist so what I've used is a couple of obtuse angle brackets, extra washers over the slotted holes and a three hole strip both sides same design also and this goes for the uh, both ends of the bonnet uh, so you can see there at the front and at the rear and again the other side I've added washers and what I've used, I've used the concave uh, shape of the washers obviously some are more concave than others uh, and placed them in such a way to reduce the twist but there is some twist, uh, especially to the rear um, supports there. As it stands at the moment, this is not very secure because it's only got the one bolt each side there. But when we get round to it, there will be um, a 25 hole strip uh, from here to the rear, and then a 7 hole strip coming uh, from uh, roughly this area. That will form the hangers for the rear axle and also support the front better. Uh, but we're continuing with the structure first because it stays nice and stable on the table. Now, 
the original instructions uh, state a uh, what well, looks like a seven hole again it was hard to work out seven hole strip bent as you can appreciate quite severely between these two uprights of the doorway so after making the triplane and changing the fuselage strips to red ones I've got these spare well, they're sort of grey but almost tan really uh, so it's a similar uh, for want of a better word uh, sort of colour <laughs> of sorts grey colour to the zinc so I've used one of them because it's easy to bend and it's bent nicely and hasn't destroyed um, a proper solid strip because of the uh, extra width caused by the chassis and the alignment we're getting uh, larger gaps than would be uh, that would be needed really uh, that does need adjusting looking at that however on the diagram there's nothing here all it says that the inner uprights are joined to these uprights but they're half inch away so how do you do it so I was, I'd already put these on I thought well, they're right they're not on so I took them off and I thought well what better way to join them and neaten up the front end a little bit so I've left those on so a bit of adjustment needed there this top 9 hole strip has been fitted with angle brackets here and one underneath to fit to the front. Fitting the strip on top means I didn't have to use any washers over the slotted section, the slotted holes. These bolts will come out for five hole strip uprights to do the top deck once I get them. They've only been added to make it all nice and uh, easy to keep together for the time being. And this strip here, seven hole strip across here, the initial look, and I'm pretty sure now. That was a 9 hole strip straight across these uh, from these angle brackets here, underneath here. Now that left very little room for the uh, steering column. And what I've done, I've used some angle brackets and pushed it back uh, effectively with a 7 hole strip, thus giving the impression of a seat. Although you can see I haven't put the wheels on yet, I have put the uh, structure for the wheels in place and that has been tweaked a little bit um, for a couple of reasons anyway as per the instructions as much as I can work out anyway we've got a 25 hole strip secured from the uh, underneath the uh, where the engine would be the chassis on the base plate all the way along to this point here where yet again more guesswork settled on a 7 hole strip for the rear part of the hangar now as you can see there's a nut and bolt in there that's just to keep it all in place until I've put the axle in which will go in there and the wheel on and uh, we'll take a wheel and uh, as you can see the wheels are rather small for the model um, I have been thinking of the future of the model once it's been completed and done its stuff I may put slightly bigger wheels on and uh, put a bit more panelling in and uh, as I've, I think I've mentioned earlier, uh, if I haven't I will now, I'm thinking of putting a number one clockwork motor in it. Um, but then thoughts, I've been thinking again, I thought well maybe a little uh, three stroke six volt electric motor in where it should be up here. Um, driving a prop shaft down to it and have it radio controlled at least for the steering. Um, which would have to be tweaked again as well. Um, but I, I've been reading about the B-types and they were chain drive at the back end so you know, a belt is just almost a chain, I could do chain drive of course. Now that's all for well in the future really motor wise. Um, the beauty of it is it will be still quite open at the top once it's completed so I can get at everything I need to get at. I have strengthened the, uh, the hangers if you like for the rear wheels. Uh, it was just so flexible uh, left and right or side to side and I thought that's going to be a bit naff even for just sort of pushing it along so it may be a temporary measure but uh, if I do fit a, a motor uh, the clockwork motor, the number one, it will go fairly close to the rear axle so some strengthening will be needed anyway for that to carry the motor um, but it was very very flexible 
Uh, it's better now. Here's the step, which is just an 11 hour strip and a couple of uh, angle brackets. Um, the slots of the angle brackets have been very, very useful for getting the right angles on things and alignments. Uh, in the case of this side, to get the, um, the step level, I had to shove it more or less right up on the uh, available adjustment with the slot. And this was created due to the construction of the uh, the sides of the stairs the, and the railings of the stairs, uh, which we'll come on to next. The original instructions uh, use at least two 25 hole strips. These are for the outer rails. I'll show you the rest of the structure in a moment. But um, I'll try and show you this. Uh, if I'm going to bend something quite severely, and, and in this case there's twists as well, I don't use the best strips if I can help it. To this end I had some 25 valve strips, quite old, and because they're older they're quite thick and quite, well, a lot more difficult to bend than the later stuff. Uh, they were a bit rusty so I cleaned them up with a wire brush and this is one of them. Cleaned them up with a wire brush, get them in focus. And I thought, it doesn't matter then if it snaps or I have issues, I can rebend it and everything. That was the initial one for the outer bottom rail. That's this one. But it was so stiff and to be honest, slightly too long. I scrapped that idea and went for separate strips of varying sizes. So as you can see, we have a, a mixture of 11 hole, 5 hole, I think there's one 7 hole strip. Um, we've got a 5 hole here, then there's an 11 hole, there's a twist that's joined here, overlapping slightly there with another 11 hole up to the top of the lower window. Then there's a 5 hole strip there, that will have to be in, undone to fit the 25 hole strips, uh, sorry, plates across the top there, but that's, that's only a couple of bolts. And again, 11 hole strip here. Uh, backed with a 5 hole strip for the join and another 11 hole strip down here again there's twists uh, as we go uh, the inner um, rails less space tighter twists and all that made it a bit more difficult I'll show you a bit more close up of them shortly uh, initially I bent them The uh, this was the first one I did and I bent it round a couple of tins uh, one was a meatball tin and the other was a smaller Peas tin and it not too bad of course you do tend to get them as I'm sure you're all now but I'm still re-remembering you tend to get them to bend across on the holes then and then because there's been uh, more corrections once it's been in place my thumbs really that's softened that a little bit the top rail which is uh, on the left which is an 11 hour strip suitably twisted of course the diagram suggest that there's a nice wide gap between the rails up the side of the stairs of course there isn't without coming out right away from the chassis really in this area the lower one is an 11 hole strip and a 7 hole strip with uh, a twist in the 7 hole strip more than anything but with a slight twist in the 7 hole strip at the bottom uh, put one bolt and it pulled it all nice and together so there is a little bit of tension in some of these parts when you undo them, but um, I dare say some of them will never be straight again. As you can see folks, a little bit more progress. We have put uh, this strip here, 11 hour strip, which has been curved with the two rod axle technique, which um, you couldn't really see 
uh, earlier on in the video when I showed you. I'll try and do this as best as I can. So basically, you put your axle rods in the holes where you want the bend, and in this case, you pull out of pressure as you're looking it to the left and right of the shot. To the curve required, little and often is better. Right folks, this is the top of the doorway and the instructions, the actual description says to connect these uprights, these 11 hole uprights with angle brackets underneath here. The angle brackets were and the uprights are nowhere near each other, we're looking at uh, an inch out so that has been connected both sides with three hole one and a half inch uh, strips um, plenty of adjustment with the uh, the slots on the angle brackets helped there also nearby those uprights the uh, the base here with the alignment issues but of putting uh, girders alongside base plates throwing everything out slightly there's quite a gap here and to get rid of that gap instead of just using washers I've used modern two inch strips the five hole versions I've only got one um, uh, normal four hole one which is a cut down really um, so I've used that to fill the gap which aligns all the holes up again correctly um, and makes it a little, a little bit neater job um, than leaving a couple of gaps in the middle with it spaced by washers or indeed out of alignment which would have caused no end of trouble with the stairs as you can see the wheels are on um, the front lights are on the steering has been fitted um, steering was awkward because there really is no I say awkward it is a simple steering setup but there were no instructions really for the front at all but uh, we'll come on to a close up of that shortly um, as you can see the axles are sticking out which is a common thing there's a I forget what number of part number is but something like I think it's four and a half and five inch axles then come under the same part number and it says that it says either four and a half or five inch and these are probably four and a half looking at them so here you have the steering setup um, the description does tell you more or less how to fit the steering column as previously mentioned it's fitted through the rear of the bonnet um, the uh, the pictures suggest that the uh, rear bonnet supports are one aisle forward but then you wouldn't be able to get this rake on the real bus there is no rake so again once I've de displayed the model a little bit I may tweak the model um, to be slightly more lifelike without actually it's not true to type exactly but a very similar style the uh, description also mentions using a double bench strip here yet in the parts list there is none uh, for the model I should say there's no parts, uh, part listed um, and for the front the actual steering itself there's no mention at all and there's no axle listed in the parts list for the model uh, so essentially what I've done is copied the motor van albeit probably on a slightly long, longer axle um, but there is uh, collars uh, part 59 if I remember right you can see there's one there, there is collars listed but there ain't much use for them and I've used uh, four I think uh, top of the skit, well middle of the steering column, one there one there and one underneath there so the difference there being there would probably be normal set screws not grub screws um, and essentially the rest of it is uh, pretty much as I can well what I can see um, the uh, the string there is Ralph's string from uh, Ralph Lawton at his uh, shop Ralph uh, Ralphshop.com what I did do is stretch it a little bit before fitting it so it wouldn't stretch on the knots are just normal knots, nothing special there it is wrapped twice around there to give it grip and initially it does come off there when you're trying to do it but once it's on, and it doesn't have to be too tight, just reasonably tight it's, it works fine, it is quite smooth although again it's not proper Ackerman steering it's about the most basic steering you could get 
It does work very nicely. I've put a drop of oil on the pivot. And here we have the completed bus. Um, as you can see, red flexible plates at the top, front and rear of the top to replace the suggested cardboard and there are no advertisements on yet. I'm going to think about that, uh, how we're going to do that. Uh, looks quite nice. It would probably look even better if there were a bit more red panelling down below. But essentially it is as the uh, instruction manual. Right here folks you can see the rear pole, handrail. Um, as previously mentioned would have had the uh, tongue spring clips for the um, keyway um, wheels etc. Um, thus making a 6 inch long enough to fit between the top and the bottom. However, not having any of those, nor ever seen any in the flesh to be honest, I got hold of a six and a half inch axle and have secured it with ordinary spring clips. We've got one on the bottom there and you may just be able to see if I angle this correctly there's one in there just fits. Also you can see the string steps have been added up the stairs. They're not too bad until you get to about well just out of view really then I start to get a bit too out of angle to be true stairs but it's close. Um, I may the bottom one here could really be doing one low but then it'd be probably too much of an angle that way and then it'd be a larger gap so it's not too bad. This is the other side um, essentially as the instructions with quite a bit of guesswork here and there and uh, a little bit fiddly in places mainly doing the string stairs. Uh, no motor fitted as yet that'll be after mechanuity which is in a roughly a couple of weeks time where you'll be able to see this bus the World War One era motor van, the battleship, possibly a few others if I can get round to finishing those. But there will also be other Meccano models of my own, of course plenty of other people there. Uh, I will be running steam powered Meccano models and Meccano augmented Mammoth steam engines. Uh, so see you there.